All right, so bell ringer for today. Describe why businesses use subliminal messages in their advertisements. There we go. Maybe it's sports teams. I don't know. Forms of entertainment. Why do they use subliminal messages? Some of them, a little far out there. I don't know about them. Interesting to, why they would do that. But other ones, just plain and simple. They have a hidden meaning within their logo. All right, so what do we have here? What do we got? So why businesses use subliminal messages in their advertisements? What do you think? Booker, what do you have? Yeah, yeah, good job. Good job. So to try to persuade more people to buy their products. Okay, whether it's, I don't know, whether it's a refreshment like Coke, especially them. Those guys there, I tell you what. I know before every movie I watch in movie theater, so I go, oh, yeah, go grab a Coke real quick. Here's your chance. Or they have a pretty funny commercial at the beginning and it makes it relatable, right? Maybe it's like with a commercial, they're trying to uh, make it funny, make it humorous so that you would just go and spend more of your money with Coke. I know those Super Bowl commercials are a little weird, aren't they? Like a Doritos one. Oh, I always love that Doritos one. Some guy's eating Doritos. He has like the... Dorito like residue left over on his fingers, and some other guy grabs his hand, like sucks the cheese off his finger. I'm like, what is he doing? It's like, mmm, cheese. And he's like, I'm going to get more Doritos. It's like, what is going on there? But it makes you laugh, right? It makes you think, oh, maybe we should buy some of these Doritos. All right, good. What do you have, Campbell? Um, I said they use play, like play games in the person's conscious mind. Yeah, yeah, good job. So maybe it has a hidden meaning, right? Maybe it's. Uh, some of these psychologists, some of these people come up with these advertisements, subliminal messages to make people think about it in their unconscious mind. Maybe they're not thinking it about it consciously, but in their conscious, unconscious drive, it's pushing them to buy those products. And we talked about that yesterday with that study of how even some people use sexual attractiveness to push people to buy their products. All right, good, good. Hannah, what do you have? That way, we go to buy it instead of having them in message straightforward. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Good job. I don't know if I showed you the one picture yesterday. It was a Burger King, uh, Burger King picture. It was of a chicken sandwich, I think. And they always say, "Oh, ninety-nine cents, ninety-nine cents, ninety-nine cents." And then, like within the lettuce, it's actually like a dollar. 
it's pretty cool. Like the dollar is actually folded in the lettuce. Like, oh, why do they do that? Oh, well, it's under a dollar, right? It's 99 cents. You're not paying that full dollar. It's like, uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. All right, so is there any questions on that? So I know I went over some of the logos. I know the Milwaukee Brewers is one of my favorite ones with the M and the B and uh, some other logos that definitely – show some subliminal messages or symbols within the logos that helps people understand a little bit more like oh that's pretty unique that's a cool logo right? that's awesome it has all, you know, all all elements within it college football college universities use a lot of these messages too within their logos to show maybe their historic value or historic meaning and uh, it's pretty cool to see their creativity with it all right okay so let's go over the activity from yesterday. What do we have here? What do we got? Do you want to, do you have it on like a Google form, your logos and your descriptions or no? No, maybe not. Or do you just like fill it out? Like, oh, I did this logo. Do you like actually paste your logo on? You did? Cam, Hannah, did you do that? Yeah. Did you? Okay. So is it all right if we maybe screen mirror it up there? Cool. All right, let's do that. <clears throat> Now we can check them out, see them. Hopefully this works. There we go. I guess we'll start with you, Hannah. You want to show your activity from yesterday? You can't. Uh, all right. Um, Campbell, you want to go? Sure. Did you turn it in? Yeah, I turned it in. I guess I could have accessed it that way, too. Darn it. I oh, well. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. All right, cool. <laughs> 110. 110. I get that all the time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't want to put that on. No, no, yeah, I get it. Pretty simple message. Okay. All right, what do we have? Well, I found the same one as Sarah about the Mickey Mouse Disney movie. Oh, okay. Um, and why do you think they did that? Because it was a movie by Disney. Yeah. Yeah, good job. So try to make it seem like, oh, well, you know, Disney came up with it, and here's our logo that kind of matches up to Mickey Mouse's head. All right, good. Whoa, that's a good one. Nice. I didn't notice that right away, but then I'm like, oh, okay. I see the two people getting each other. Nice. NBC. Um, it was actually meant to be a peacock, but they just, they just went right there. Yeah. But they took that out because people were Really? I think their streaming service now is called Peacock. Might be, yeah, they might. Not, I know for a time period they took it away because they said it wasn't effective. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like it's not that many people were picking up on it. I, I don't know if I would have noticed that. I remember seeing, you know what? I don't think I've ever noticed it, but I remember seeing like a meme or something yeah. of subliminal messages like, and like, I just that. yeah, all right, cool. I like that. Good job. Good job. All right, Booger, what do you have here? 110, just to let you know. <laughs> oh, the Bronx Zoo. That's awesome. That's awesome. There's a lot of zoos that do that. I think there's another one, a Chicago Zoo, that has. I have to look at it again. Did you see something? The face is in it. Yeah, yeah. It spells out Toyota. It's kind of, I saw that. I remember seeing it. I'm like, uh, how does it do? Right. So the T in it, obviously. The O is easy. The Y. I guess I could see the Y. Yeah. And then the A at the top. Okay. All right, cool. I like that. Nice. Toyota. Jack in the box. Yeah, the 
it says that they were Oh, okay. All right. Jack in the box. Look at the fish down there. Cool. All right. Awesome. I never ate a Jack in the box. Did you? Where did you? Camel, huh? Anna? Yeah, I never. I don't even know where they're. I, I've heard of it before. I just never. Yeah. All right. Let me connect it over. I will play yours then, Anna. And you can. You can show everybody yours. How does that sound? Okay. I guess I can put up Sarah's too. See what she has. All right, Hannah, Hannah. There we go. Cool. All right. So Chick fil A, that's a good one, huh? The C is a chicken, right? I guess there's not much else to say about that. They're famous for their chicken sandwiches. I just had Chick-fil-A over the weekend. Oh, I love it. So good. What do you pick, the Popeye's chicken sandwich or the Chick-fil-A? What do you What would you get, Michaela? You never had Popeye's or Chick-fil-A. You're missing out. You're missing out. What about you, Campbell? I've never had Popeye's. Popeyes is good. It's just big, huge. It looks like they put the whole chicken on it, it seems. What about you, Hannah? Oh, my gosh. You guys got to try it out. All right, what is this? <laughs> so that's what they said. Nice. Okay. So yeah, I do see the bear there in the mountain. And what do you say? It's chocolate. Yeah. Let me see if I'm recording yet. Okay, good. Nice. Sweet. All right. And the last one. Oh, you did NBC as well. Okay. Cool. So the peacock. But yeah, I do think they have a streaming service now. It is peacock. So. All right. Let's see another one here. Where is Sarah's? I don't see Sarah's at. Sarah? She, oh, no, she did it on paper. She did tell me that. Yeah, she did it on paper. Oh. All right. All right, so let's see what Eden has. I don't know if I'm allowed to be doing this, but I didn't grade it yet, so. It's all right. Everybody has it turned in. Amazon, A to Z. We knew that one. It kind of looks like a smiling face, too. You guys notice that? Oh, yeah, smile on Amazon's awesome. Ah, cool. Tostitos, we talked about that one. The uh, teas look like uh, people dipping chips in the sauce. Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. 32? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure they have more flavors now. I would think. Maybe not. Maybe just keep it right at 31. All right, another one here. Haley, Weast. Let's see what we got. Amazon. Oh, my God. What the heck? They did this. They must have watched the video. Hey, at least they're watching the video, right? Because those are the ones I went over. All right, cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, Haley. Pepsi. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, this one was a funny. I remember this. I remember this. You guys are, do you see this commercial? Like when Coke and Pepsi were both like duking it out over this ad. And, uh, well, Pepsi just did, oh, it's scary Halloween. This is my costume. But it was like a Coke thing. And then on the on the right side, Coke just played with it. It's like, oh, yeah, not everybody can be a hero, right? Everyone wants to be one. He'll just make it look like he's a superhero. That's hilarious. That's some good jabs at each other. Actually, that show I watch, you, you guys know, the Food That Build America, they talk about Pepsi and Coke. It's pretty cool how they are duking it out and battling who's the best refreshment soda. I love that. That's cool. Skittles. Oh, my gosh. Haley. So with the berry explosion – they threw sex there to try to, oh my gosh. 
Yes, 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 we know that. So with advertisements, unfortunately, they try to put things like that in. Oh, Milwaukee Brewers. You must have been really watching the video then, I guess, huh? So Milwaukee Brewers, I like this one a lot, the B and the M. And we all know it's a glove, a baseball mitt, catching a ball. Cool stuff. I was playing the Wii yesterday, home run derby. Fun stuff. I forgot how fun the Wii really is. All right. So vocab. Is everybody good with vocab? Did anybody finish it? No? Cam, have you finished it? Nice. Hannibal, what about you? Almost done. Booker, you finish it? All right. How about I give you uh, two minutes? Does that sound good? And then we'll move on today with the anatomy of the eye and a little bit of how our senses all kind of work together. Can we just chill out? Maybe think about bowling. <laughs> okay. Yep, you're on the board now. And and on the website. So when you graduate or something, you can show all your you know, your roommates in college. Oh, yeah. That is me. I was the champ. <laughs> Oh, I got to put that up. Yeah. I have those two pictures. Yeah, I'll add those in. I'll add those in my prep period. How's that sound? Eighth period. That sounds good. I was thinking maybe, depending where we're at, maybe Friday we can do the taste test for the sodas. See if we can. Is everybody all right with the soda? All right, good. All right. That's lucky. Everybody likes the soda. Very good. Always worry. So I don't drink soda. I don't like it. All right, whatever. I'll get a few sodas at her close and see if we can tell the difference. All right, so we'll move on here. So how our senses are alike. And like I mentioned in the last chapter with the brain, uh, we, sense, we sense the world around us, and it is really relatable to memories, okay? I think we all can agree with that. Whenever we walk into a restaurant, we know exactly what we want to eat. We know and we remember um, the flavor of it, the taste of it, okay? The smell of things, uh, the sight, right? Okay, and uh, our senses all relate with memories and it's amazing how that works okay we all know whenever we see let's say a picture of a bell right we know what sound it should make and sometimes people play like i guess you say play tricks on other people to try to trick your your mind of thinking what a bell should really sound like okay so they might show a bell and play a different sound like maybe a horn going off it's like wait a minute that's not come on or they'll play something very similar to what a bell would sound, but not totally like it. Okay, but we all can relate to that, especially the way how our senses all work together and how they can, you know, obviously you know, work hand in hand with memory. All right, so vision, hearing, smell, taste, touch, pain, body position are all similar for three reasons. You know, obviously pain, uh, maybe touch sensation, we can maybe uh, understand what some things do feel like or maybe how a certain pain does feel especially people that play sports i know whenever i had an eye high ankle sprain i knew exactly what that feeling was like it was terrible right and the sound it makes yeah you know, I, I did it three times in football you hear a pop in a football game and you hear a pop and 
right away you feel a shooting pain from your ankle all the way up to your knee. I'm like, yep, there it goes again. Darn it. Darn it. Or uh, my one buddy who I used to wrestle a lot, whenever he had out throw his shoulder, you know, his shoulder would come out of socket. He's like, ah, here we go again. Like, that would be terrible, right? Uh, I couldn't even imagine the pain. And he just right away, he'd be like, oh, I'm good. Jeez, it's unbelievable. But with sensation, we can kind of tell what that feeling would be like, what the sound would be like, and with other senses, obviously, especially with food. I know with food, we can always maybe understand the taste of something, even when we see a picture of it. All those advertisements of Burger King, McDonald's, whenever they show the Big Mac or the Whopper, I'm always, oh, I love that taste of that. I need it bad. I need it bad. Or uh, Legend's Pizza. And we got Legends Pizza and Higgins. No, it's a little far away. They have a sweet sauce, though. And uh, they mix the sweet sauce in with a buffalo chicken pizza. It's so good. It's just, mm, I have it on my mouth. I can taste it. I'm salivating. Like, oh, every time I see the picture on Facebook or something like that, I can already, already just imagine it, of how it would taste. All right, so first, they all transduce stimulus energy into neural impulses. All of our senses do this, right? and obviously they might go to different locations within the brain, but uh, this all occurs. Okay, This all is being sent with a signal, whether it's an auditory nerve or the optic nerve, which we're going to talk about today. This message is being sent okay, through energy, by energy, to a certain location in the brain to be perceived, to be understood, so we can understand what we are sensing. All right, so second, they are all more sensitive to change than to constant stimulation. All right, we can all understand that as well. So whenever we're listening to music, okay, if there's a sound that just seems off or something that just, maybe it's louder, maybe it's, you know, obviously they turn it down on us. I know, especially when I'm in the mode, jamming out to music when I was younger, my mom would come in and turn it down a little bit. Oh, I was in the mode. I was in the zone here. What are you doing? And uh, Obviously, we're more susceptible to understand the difference in stimulus rather than you know, a constant in that stimulus. So, I always, I always hated that when I was younger. I'd be jamming out, listening to music, and I would come down and turn it down. i got customers in my hair salon. What are you doing? Trying to scare them away? My bad. All right, third, they all provide us with information about the environment we are in. All right, so whether it's either setting, right, maybe we are uh, maybe relaxing for the night and we're just watching our favorite show, The Food That Built America. Yeah. We are relaxed and uh, obviously you know, we're in an environment where we can enjoy that movie. Or whenever my friend comes over with his kids, they're running all around, steal my lightsaber, smacking it off the walls and chasing my cat around and my cat starts freaking out, then I can't enjoy my show. Or whenever I'm watching the Packers play. Oh, man, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. My buddy comes over with his, his kids there. Well, it was funny because one's screaming on one side of me, the other screaming on the other. I'm trying to watch the playoff game when they lost to the Buccaneers. I'm just like, all right, what are we yelling about? <laughs> like, I can't enjoy the game. I've yet to watch and enjoy this game. And they lost. So, like, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You're never coming over again. Like, oh, no, no, we want to play the Switch. Nope. Oh, good times. All right, so how our senses are different. All right, so we all know uh, definitely with the locations in the brain uh, where these senses are going to be located, where uh, you know, where we're going to you know, visualize something in the opposite below, uh, whether we hear something, temporal lobe. Uh, maybe we're just trying to understand, grasp knowledge, of, uh, you know, maybe planning and judgment objectives, frontal lobe, okay? Uh, expressive language, different location. A receptive language, obviously a different location in the brain with the Brocus area and the Wernicke's area. So, yeah, that's obviously a clear difference. Motor cortex, when we're trying to move, when we're trying to react to something. Uh, obviously, the location of the brain is where these senses are all different. And we all know that. We all know that. So that's obviously a clear difference with sensation.
I usually show a video of The Punisher. You guys ever see that movie? Oh, here I am, a comic book nerd again, talking about movies and comic book characters. But it's a pretty cool image. We'll talk about it when we get to the gate control theory of how we can maybe, you know, how our mind maybe tricks us into believing that something or we're sensing something when we really are not. And uh, with the Punisher, he tries to interrogate this one person. So he strings him up upside down, blindfolds him, and he has like a stake sitting beside him. He brings a blowtorch out. So obviously the man hears a blowtorch going. That's getting interrogated. Here's a blowtorch going. He's like, oh, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? So he puts it down on the stake, and you hear the stake sizzling. He's like, what is that? What is that? He goes, oh, it's so hot that you don't feel it right away. But that's your fat burning off your body. And he kind of starts freaking out. And then he brings a popsicle out, just like a little popsicle. It's because it's cold. He just pokes it on his back, and he thinks the cold sensation is actually intense heat. But he smells the burning of the meat. He hears it, and he feels the cold sense. He's like, oh, my gosh, you burned me apart. When really he's just playing a trick on him. So I'll play that when we get to pain and uh, gate control theory. I think that's a really cool clip. It's just one part of it. i got to cut out of it because it gets a little, a little crazy when he's describing the story. So I'll talk to you about that soon. I love that clip, though. I love that movie. It's my favorite movie. All right. So like I mentioned before with their sensations, uh, we obviously have a location in our mind where it's linked to memory. Okay. With sensation, it's commonly linked to memory. And with food, like I mentioned, or if we ever see an object and uh, we hear sound of it, maybe it just kind of throws us off. I know especially whenever I see – and, you know, they, 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 they play, kind of play tricks on you with TikTok or videos that you watch with these dogs, a chihuahua or something, and they have it bark. And it's like this loud, you know, this loud, uh, you know, deep tone of, let's say, a Rottweiler barking. It's like, well, oh, wait a minute. That's not the sound that chihuahua should make because we kind of make sense of what we already understand about, let's say, a dog barking or let's say a bell ringing. Okay, they might play a different sound. I know especially people used to try to do that with another sound that's not very not very good. Whenever they were playing a video, you'd hear it blurred as loud as you can, especially in a classroom, and then everybody looks at you like, what are you watching over there? That's really embarrassing, but I'm not going to bring that one up. I'm sure many of you are thinking of what I'm talking about now. All right, so sensation experiment. We'll do it Friday. Okay, we'll talk about it Friday. Okay, I feel like that will be a cool, fun Friday thing to do with the soda, especially – with tasting soda. Heck, if you guys want it, you can have it after yet. I promise I won't. And you can watch me jumping in. Ah, maybe not, because then you guys will know exactly what soda I dump in the cup. So we'll figure out that. But guys, maybe you can walk away with some soda. All right, so vision, real quick, vision. I want to go through a little bit of this, and then I have an activity for you. So with vision, I want to talk about a little bit of the anatomy of the eye, okay, and uh, how this works. How we, uh, you know, transduction works with the process of vision and how where it's located. Obviously, we know the occipital lobe. But real quick, so this isn't on the slides or anything, so I want to add this. With the anatomy of the eye, there's three layers to the eye. Okay, three layers. The first one is the part we obviously know, the white part of our eye, where it is controlled and you know, muscles are attached, which allows for eye movement. And it really just forms the shape of the eye. This is called sclera. Oh, chalk's falling apart. There we go. The sclera. The C or S C L E R A. So the sclera, like I mentioned, is where the muscles attach to the outer part of the eye, and it's the white. You know, when we look at the eyeball, that's the white part of the eye, and this allows for eye movement, and it forms a shape of the eyeball. So the sclera, make sure you guys write that down. It's really important. Definitely be on it fast. All right, the middle layer of the eye, where the blood vessels are located, is the choroid. So blood vessels, we all know, with blood flow, allowing us to obviously form with vision and allowing us to help us with that. And in certain cases, maybe the choroid might appear through the sclera, especially if we're maybe in intense situations. Okay. I know with wrestling, football, I always used to have you know, blood vessels burst in my eye, depending on what I was doing. If I was lifting something, uh, intense movements obviously hits to the head. You know, 
like corduroy would kind of, you know, you'd see the blood vessels through the sclera. And I mean, in other scenarios with maybe drug use, alcohol use, you can see the choroid, especially with the blood flow through the eyes. That's why a lot of people's eyes become glassy when intoxicated or broken up a little bit too much. All right, the next one, retina. The retina. So that is the inner layer of the eye. We're going to talk about that a little bit more today in detail. And this is where the photoreceptors are located. So rods and cones, and how we can take shape, uh, yeah, shape, depth, color, you name it. That information is going to be sent through transduction to the optic nerve, which is going to send a signal to our occipital lobe, understanding and perceiving what we are seeing. Sorry, my shoe's coming out done now. All right. So you guys good with that? So make sure, again, you remember those three layers, sclera, choroid, and retina. So how the eye works, we all know light comes through the cornea, right? The cornea is this outer, it looks like a lens kind of on the mold of the eye. And the cornea obviously protects the eye, to, uh, protects the pupil, the iris, right? And light shines and enters first through the cornea. The iris is surrounding the pupil. And that's where we see eye color. Okay, so obviously people have blue eyes, brown eyes, green, hazel, whatever. And not only does it help with you know, its use is eye color, it is uh, refracting and maybe you know, closing, closing light through the pupil. So depending on how bright a light might be, the iris um, either retracts or expands. Okay, with people with concussions, that's what they a lot of times do. They shine a light in your eye and try to show if your pupil is dilated or if it's not. Okay, and the iris allows for that light to be either, I guess you'd say, you know, going through the lens, either increased or decreased, right? So depending on how bright that light might be. Okay, especially in the mornings. I know when I'm in the morning, I wake up like, oh, my God, this light, turn it off, turn it off, I don't want to see it. But uh, the iris kind of detects or, you know, fracts or, uh, or might increase the light coming through through the pupil. We all know the pupil, the center of the eye, where the light shines through the pupil, hits the lens. And the lens really is like a projector. Okay, it projects that light to the back of the eyeball. And that is projecting it onto the retina. Okay. And the retina, like I mentioned already, is that inner layer of the eye. <clears throat> So the retina is that inner layer. This is what the inner layer is. And like I mentioned, the retina, you now photoreceptors are located there in the retina. The fovea, real quick, guys, is a part of the retina. Okay, the fovea is a part of the retina where the most dense photoreceptors are located. So cones and rods are located. And that's mostly where that light is shined. Okay. That light is refracted, reflected to the back of the retina where the fovea is located. Bless you, Michaela. I don't even hear anything. Yellow back. So the fovea, like I said, is that location where an abundance and I guess you say an oversupply of photoreceptors are located, which allows us to see sharp images. Okay, the depth of certain certain things, color, obviously, um, features, you name it. <clears throat> So real quick, here's how these photoreceptors are sending this information to our occipital lobe. Number one, light enters the eye, triggers photochemical reactions in the rods and cones at the back of the retina. So like I mentioned, this is what it, you know, the light is being shined through this lens to the back of the retina. And this is where the fovea is located, obviously. These photoreceptors okay, inside the retina are sending this information <clears throat> through transduction to the occipital lobe. So two, chemical reaction in turn activates bipolar cells. So bipolar cells then activate the ganglion cells. Don't worry about that too much. The axons of which covers a form of optic nerve. So this is allowing for that neural message to be sent to the occipital lobe. So the photoreceptors are receiving this light that is reflected from the lens to the retina, mostly where the fovea is located. 
the photoreceptors are sending that electrical signal when that light is being shined on that retina, that fovea, and it's sending a signal to the occipital lobe, understanding, you know, later to be perceived in the optic, or sorry, in the occipital lobe, yeah. So it's sending that information to that optic nerve. So what happens if light is shined right here at the optic nerve? What do you think? What happens if light is shined on the optic nerve? Are there photoreceptors there? Are there? Campbell, are there photoreceptors there at the optic nerve? Get no. no, there isn't, right? There isn't. So what do you think happens? Can we visualize it? It's like a blind spot. You guys ever hear about a blind spot before? I know in a car you see a blind spot. So, you know, the, the, the part, the location where we can't see that that um, that image, even though it might be right in front of us. Maybe it's right in front of us. We can't even visualize, or, visualize it or see it. Okay, I have a kind of like a short activity. I'll do it tomorrow with you guys where, you know, when we're visualizing something, it might actually, you know, the, the, the light actually might bounce to our blind spot where we can't visualize a certain image. Uh, they, they do it like a floating head. That's what they call it. And uh, we'll talk about that more tomorrow. All right, is there any questions of the anatomy of the eye? Is there any questions on, you know, the of uh, how we visualize and, and how the photoreceptors of cones work? So real quick, last thing, photoreceptors. Sorry about that. <laughs> the photoreceptors are light-sensitive cells, neurons, and the retina that convert light energy into neural energy. So it's capturing this light and sending a neural energy message to our optic nerve to be processed in the occipital lobe. And real quick, rods are sensitive to dim light, but not color. Okay, so dim light, not color. So mostly like features, I guess you could say. Uh, background images. Uh, anyway. Cones, photoreceptors are especially sensitive to colors, but not dim light. So easy way to remember it, cones starts with a C, color. Okay, cones, color. All right, so like I said, photoreceptors capturing that light, and uh, their job is to capture that light and send it as a neural message to our optic nerve. And these photoreceptors are located where? Where are they located again? Before we move on here, before we end class, where are they located? What layer of the eye? Anybody, please help me. Retina. There you go. Good job. Your retina. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Any questions? I know I went through a lot of stuff right there, but we'll make sure we have it. And here's where the retina is located, obviously. That blue layer, it's located. It's the inner layer of the eye. And the photoreceptors are all located there, which sends that neural message, neural signal to our optic nerve. Here's where the optic nerve is. All right, there we go. So tomorrow, please have this activity done. I didn't get to the video. Maybe I'll play that for you tomorrow to start a class. But the activity should be posted here shortly. If it didn't already. Let's see where we're at. Yep, Tuesday. Okay. So there it is, labeling the eye. Make sure you have that finished for tomorrow. Shouldn't take you long to complete. All right, see you guys. Have a good one. Take care.